In this vlog, we're going to look at questioning skills, and this is really coming back to the fact that we've already identified interviewing people as one of our key sources of objective evidence during the audit process. There's different questioning styles, is what we'll have a look at first, when and where we use them, based on the type of information and evidence we need. We can choose a style that gets us there most effectively. Occasionally, we might choose a style of question to help manage our auditors as well. Very often, we start our interview with a new auditee with some open questions. Even that can be breaking the ice. How was your weekend? things like that, just to build some rapport. If we're auditing how chemicals are received and stored into the warehouse, as an example, we might deliberately start with some icebreaker kind of questions, then some open questions. Very open one about, are there any chemicals that need to be separated? All chemicals always put inside the bundled area when they're delivered. Some reasonably open questions like that. We're not saying talk about everything in the world related to chemical management. We are putting some boundaries around our question, but we're not seeking such specific information at this point. It works well for a lot of auditees. They feel comfortable because they're not thinking oh gee the auditor's really fishing for specific information I'm not sure what they're looking for you're really saying to the auditees in relation to how you store chemicals at work tell us what you think is important about that to start with. It can be a good technique for us as an auditor too to get a bit of an understanding of the process and how they do it. In terms of the type of auditor that might work well with, sometimes we start auditing someone, they're giving us a reasonable response and after a while the amount of what they're saying is dropping away. Throw it back to an open question can be a really good way to get the conversation started again. So very often we follow this pattern, start with an open question or two, then we'll come to one of these other styles, particularly closed questions. They're almost the opposite of open questions. We're narrowing down that range of possible responses. It works very well. If I just need specific information, I may as well ask for it. Say, for example, that was around a induction process and I need to see, has Fred been inducted? I may as well say, can I see the induction record for Fred? Nice and specific, good time management tool that keeps the audit moving. Busy auditee quite likes that too. Open question, they get an understanding of what you're looking for and why then very happy to you know, give you specific records if that helps cover off that requirement. Challenging questions, personally I don't use them that much in audits, but it can help us if we're getting an overly rosy picture or generalized responses or getting high level responses and we need to get down to the next level of detail. Example of a challenging question, a situation I've come across from time to time. You're at a construction site and they're saying, oh no, we haven't had any incidents in the last two years. You're thinking, well, you're probably the only construction site I've ever heard of that hasn't. So you're getting that overly rosy picture. Throw in some challenging questions there. Is there evidence you've trained the team in how to report incidents? Are incident reports available to staff in their work areas? As a business, how do you define an incident? Things like that can be a way of just getting down to that next level that we need to get down to. Summarizing or reflecting questions, a really good style of questions where I start my next audit question with a bit of a statement. What I'm giving a bit of a statement on is if the auditees just said it's really important that we get notified by the front office that a delivery of chemicals has arrived, we get the forklift out, we put it straight in the bundled area. Summarizing or reflecting question, I would start the statement. So it's, you've said it's important to get the chemicals into the bundled area as soon as you can, and then I would go on to my next question. We don't have to do that after every type of question, but it does a couple of things. It confirms, number one, do I actually understand what the auditees just told me? I won't understand everything 100% perfectly the first time people tell me. To auditees, they really like it as well because it shows you're listening. Often you've got to write down audit notes. So some of my non-verbal communication, people might be confused as whether I'm actually listening. Number two, auditees really want to know whether you've understood what they've been telling you as well, and therefore you're representing that accurately. We don't overdo it. At really key points in the process, we'll ask a reflective or summarizing question. Simple questions, really you could almost put in your auditor's toolbox, it's your friend, but you know, just the simple questions, why do we do it this way, how, who, when, what if, all of those kind of questions can help keep the audit going. If we've asked some more technical questions, now we just need a simple question to keep things going. But often by starting with a simple question, they help keep it plain English, maximize the chance that auditees actually understand what we're looking for as well. Often the simple questions are the best. Questions like what if can be a great way of exploring contingency. Okay, we have a night shift supervisor who does X, Y, and Z. Okay, well, what if that person's not in on that shift? What's the kind of backup or contingency process for that? What if can be a really great question for exploring low likelihood events. Or if it's sites where you're saying, well, what would happen if you had a leak from your, your chemical storage area? Oh, no, I've been here 20 years, never happened. And you're trying to audit emergency response processes. So what if, okay, that's great. But what if a spill was occurring today? What would you do? can help explore those lower likelihood scenarios. Now there's a risk of overdoing that, but 
even you know, why do you do it a certain way can be a really good exploratory kind of question as well. One of the questions I did mention under the simple questions is this kind of show me question. A really good question for if you've got an auditor who's not saying much, particularly if they've got an operational role and that's their strength, a lot of people are much happier to demonstrate. Can you show us how you set the machine up rather than asking five or six questions about how the machine is set up? If that's their strength, they're much happier to show you. You can throw in one or two questions at the end and you're done. Really good approach. Leading questions is the last one I've mentioned where if you're just trying to force the auditees to give one answer and one answer only, totally inappropriate. We never use that in an audit. We actually want to go the opposite. We want the auditees to feel like they're empowered to give an answer that represents what they actually think about how the process is performed. Example of a leading question, as I said, all your viewers are going to immediately go and like this video, aren't you? Well, that's obviously forcing you into one answer and one answer only. If you found this video valuable, you may also benefit from my other HSEQ videos. Click on any of the videos on the screen to view them. They will help you on your road to becoming a HSEQ compliance rockstar. I know achieving certification to various standards is challenging, but I want to help you become confident in your HSEQ compliance.